Are you thinking about moving to Guadeloupe in the French Caribbean? In this week's interview, I'm talking to Tyro, an amazing Londoner who quit the UK to move to Dominica and then Guadeloupe. In this session, we go deep about what it's like to live in a French-speaking island when you are an English speaker. We speak about the culture, the difference in an adaptation. We go pretty deep. Um, if this is the sort of interview that you like, if you're looking to move to the Caribbean and not really sure where to start and value tips from those who've done it before, definitely sign up to the Exodus Collective for weekly interviews and tips on how to make your move to the Caribbean. That's enough for me. Tune into this week's show. I went over and I couldn't believe that I was in the Caribbean. Mm. It was just so, and I couldn't, I couldn't believe that because it was such a vast contrast from Dominica and, and Guadeloupe flats everywhere social housing and, and it just I mean obviously it's a Caribbean because as I said you see the coconut trees you see the beach you see but it just it just had a different feel a different energy yeah different energy interesting so I could kind of live here I could live here I mean they have like country they have like waterfalls they have all of that as well they have nature um but it's very kind of uh it's very controlled by the French yeah mm -hmm. definitely because it's the French overseas department but the infrastructure everything is very together you know and the healthcare another reason why i think when we came over here is because the healthcare the healthcare in dominica is just and that's another thing i would say healthcare you have to be careful because mm. the healthcare is not good right not good they have the doctors never over there but they don't have like for instance my my um my mother-in-law bless her soul she passed in 2014 and the way they treat her in the hospital, and I thought, my goodness, Vivi, that's her name, Vivi, she comes from Dominique, look how they're treating her. What if something happened to me? Is that how, how they treat me? And I said, no. So I said, and so we got to look into, like, if something happens, healthcare, we need to look into all of that. And we didn't really look into that when we felt, that's another thing I'd say, look into the healthcare of where you're going to live. To make sure you've got some good healthcare or some insurance or something mm. that can help you just in case you need your you know because we all I mean I have doctors there but every time you go to see a doctor it's a hundred dollars so if you don't have right. that you know yeah yeah yeah, yeah. opticians things like this you know so so but what do they have in, now, in, yeah so. in Guadeloupe what are the options Guadeloupe, like in Guadeloupe right in Guadeloupe just because I'm a um when we moved over I was still, it was still in EU. So mm -hmm. I'm, I was EU. So I could, I could work over here. I didn't need to have a work permit. Didn't have to anything. Plugged ourselves into the, and my husband, he's got his European passport from Holland. So we were able to um, live here as EU. My husband's still in the EU because he's Holland. He's a Dutch citizen as well. He's got Dutch citizenship. But because I've been here for five years, I've applied for a resident permit, which is, I can't say sure, which I'm in a system. So over here, things are very slow in terms of getting things done. You know, they always want paper. That's another thing. Paper, paper, it's a bureaucratic, you know? But um, I'm in a system and I will be getting my carte séjour, which means that I, you know, I will be here. I'm here legally still, because mm -hmm. I've been here legally, because um, I was at EU. But right. um, yeah, I will get my carte séjour, which is my resident permit soon, which will- That's you know, good timing. Help me Brings yes, and then you're exactly exactly. I did the right time because to get a cut says you've got to be here for five years. I've been yeah. here for more than five years now. So yeah. And so I got my cut, I got my I got my cart vital, which is like your NHS card. Mm -hmm. So I can go to any everything's free. You know, when you get your thing, obviously you have to pay into the system. I've worked over here as well. I was working when I first came over here, I was working in a school teaching English. And I did that for a little bit. And then one of my friends, a uh, friend who I met over here, her brother has a language school and they really wanted me to teach there. So I taught there for a little while. So I got myself in the system. I paid my social security. So I'm in the system now. I've got my social security number. So yeah, everything kind of went to plan in terms of living over here. But I think my heart is more in Dominica. Right. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So I'm wondering if someone wants to leave the UK and come to Guadeloupe and teach English, they can't necessarily because of the Brexit situation, right? It's yeah. It's it would hard. It would be hard. It would be wow. it would be different if it was still in the EU. Yeah. Because they could come over here. Um, but the thing about Guadeloupe, you have to have a bit of French 
and I can have a conversation. I'm not fluent, but I can like, I go to the bank and I can say a few things. I still have my accent and I'm aware of that, but it doesn't bother me, you know. I go to shops and I point at a lot of stuff and point at things and I make myself understood. Yeah. Because <laughs> they all speak French here. When they hear you speak English, I'll be on the, you know, like if I'm like my husband take the car if he goes to work and I'm on the bus and I'm talking on the phone. Yeah, I said, yeah, blah, blah, blah. And they all look at, they all stop and they look. <laughs> <laughs> they do they literally look because they're not used to hit because i've got yes there's dominicans over here there's a lot of dominicans over here right but they tend to kind of integrate themselves they speak their creole uh-huh. but then on the se- se- second place guadalupians really like dominicans mm-hmm. because there's also a lot of mixture there's a lot of half dominican half guadalupe so it's weird it's a very passive aggressive kind of relationship that they they have but when they hear me they all say dominica no, Dominique, no, Antigua, no, Barbados, no, London, London, Lond? yes, London, we, oui, Lond, hey, pourquoi, I said, why not, why are you pourquoi here, yeah, pas? pourquoi not, and they just don't know what to say, it's like really weird, because they don't understand why I'm here, I said, well, why not, I'm EU, yeah, I'm a, and then every time I used to show my passport, because you have to always show your passport, your, your identity, you know, when you, you even when you go to the bank and you you still have to show your you just have to it's weird yeah and they used to look at my pass my passport it's a British passport I was born in England and they used to look at it and they couldn't understand how comes I got a British passport it's like I was born there and when you're born in the country you get you get the passport yeah it's like explaining to these people they said pourquoi uh, how did you get I said because I was born there this is how did because I, I was I was born in London in fact I was born in the same hospital that like Princess Diana had Harry and William I was born there. Instead, instead of Mary's Paddington yeah. Hospital. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And it's like, you have to keep on explaining. And that's the thing about here in Guadeloupe. I have to keep on explaining that people are born outside the Caribbean and they talk like me, you know? Right. <laughs> so it's international, but it's French-speaking yeah. international. So people yeah. from France, other French-speaking islands. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, yeah. Right. It's, yeah. It's international, but French international. That's exactly how you would um, say, yeah. Yeah. And so how's that affected your ability to kind of have your crew, like your people? Right, yeah, my tribe. It's funny because, like, for the first, like, year or so, I was kind of isolated in my way. You know, I mean, I hadn't, I would go a lot online to speak to my friends and WhatsApp and everything like that. So I thought, okay, let me go into some expat forums. And then you always see it's always in France. It's nothing over here. So, like, Put some on the next platform. I said, look, I'm in Guadeloupe. Is there any people speak English in Guadeloupe? I, I stay in Les Abims. And then I got two responses. No, so I got one response and her name was Emma. And she goes, I goes, oh, hi, it's so nice. As you know, we were just going back and forth. And then, so that was like, we were just going back and forth in email. And then my son told me, my youngest son told me, stepmom, the cousin, her cousin lives in Guadeloupe with oh, her wow. Guadeloupe and husband. And I thought that was really weird. And I goes, really? He goes, yeah, mom, her name's Christiana. Let me give you her number. Let me give you her number. Oh. And so I, I met Christiana. And then Christiana had already communicated with Emma oh, wow. through a forum. <laughs> it was so weird how we all met up. And so we all started meeting up. And so there's three of us. And then we kind of grew into this kind of nucleus. We call ourselves GG, which means Guadeloupe, Guadagyals, basically. Oh. So there's like a little bunch of us who speak English. Emma's been over here since the 90s. Um, mm-hmm. She's married to a guy from Martinique. Christiana's with a married to a Guadeloupe guy. I met somebody else through my teaching. She's British, uh, Black British. She's married to a Guadeloupean. And then there's some other Guadeloupeans who are in the group, but they, they, they love English or English culture. So there, so we have our WhatsApp group and we would meet up all the time on the beach. We'd go to, you know, have a beach. Like some of them have got family and we'd bring mm-hmm. our husbands along. So it was like a social event and we'd all meet up. But because of COVID now, we haven't been able to do that, which is kind of, but we keep in touch on WhatsApp or we call each other, but we'd go to each other's house, we'd all cook, we'd have English teas. You know? <laughs> What, what's schooling like in, in Guadeloupe? What, how would you describe it, having seen it from the inside? I don't think it's that good. Interesting. I don't think it's good at all. I think it's got very low expectations for the pupils. Right. Um, I, don't, I wasn't really... I, I mean, because, you know, 
I was really into my children's education when mm -hmm. they were growing up and just some of the things I, I'm, no, no, I don't think it's good at all. I, I, and I think the children leave school with very low expectations. It's quite, yeah, it's very French and they don't really talk about black issues. Right. They're just French. They say, just we français. Mm -hmm. They don't even say they're Caribbean. They don't really have that Caribbean identity, which I find is really weird. They kind of, I mean, I'm not saying all of them because I've met all of them. There's also some I've met over here who are very Pan-Africanist. And so their minds are very kind of the African, but the majority of them are like, just suis Francois. They're very proud to be French. Mm -hmm. Not even, I'm saying, but, but we're in the Caribbean, you're Caribbean. No, 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 no. Yeah, je suis Francois. And I go, okay. They just don't want to hear about the Caribbean, or they didn't want to. You don't. Know, you can't even call them African. Call the try and call them African descent. They will. They will kill you. It's really weird. And when I told them I'm from, uh, I said Nigeria. You're gonna say Nigeria, Nigeria. Yeah. Oh, and they look at me. <laughs> it's just weird. It's a very kind of. I always call it a schizophrenic life living here. In yeah. Weird. They've got some really weird notions around identity and culture. It's very French orientated. The French and and the ones that I've spoken to are very kind of open. They've traveled and everything mm -hmm. like that. They say their mindsets are very um, corrupted by the French. And the French, if you look at the history of France in Africa and the Caribbean, yeah. yeah so that's yeah. interesting. All these years after France fell on, it's still stunted. Sorry. Yeah. I said all these years after France Fanon writing about these issues. It, it's oh, and France Fanon was from Martinique. Right. Yeah. 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 yeah it's, still, it's not changed. It's still, it's, and it really kind of like when I went into the schools, because I remember um, when I go into the school, because I had contracts going to the schools as well. You know, you go into these private accommodation, uh, sorry, a private um, schools. Um, and, you know, like for instance, when I, they say, oh, you know, I will just, Teach them English, have conversations with them. I said, okay, I'd like to talk about like the things that we do in England, like what we do, like we celebrate black, black history. Oh, no, 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 no. Wow. I mean, I talk about Nelson Mandela and Martin Luther King, that's it. But you wow. can't read really anything else. No. Why? Because maybe they'll get ideas. I don't know. Are these can't. schools predominantly white? No, they've got a lot of black people. So I'm seeing more. If it depends which areas you go to in Guadeloupe, because there's certain areas in Guadeloupe which are very white, like mm -hmm. Saint Francois, Saint Anne. Saint Anne's got a really nice beach. It's got a very kind of beach, tropical feel. There's a lot of white people, a lot of big houses around there. A lot of, and but the Guadeloupians are not happy. Mm. A lot of them. There's in this un, It's weird. This is um unsettling kind of feeling about the, the whites coming in and taking over. Mm. And I hear that a lot, you know, I hear it. I just hear it, what people say, you know. And um, I remember I had this teacher I was working with side by side. I loved her. She's, we still keep in touch with each other. Her name is Francis. And she's a real militant <laughs> underneath. Go, oh, be blanc, be blanc. Come, come and take over what you, well, they'll have to come on my dead body. They'll come and take my country. <laughs> But she was, she, and she just loved me because she goes, I just love your passion for your Africanness. And it's like, we keep in touch still. She just makes me laugh so much, you know. So I made a friend in her. But there's a lot. She goes, I said, but Francis, there's a lot of Guadeloupians feel this way. She goes, yes, but they don't talk about it. They don't, mm. they don't say anything. But yes, there are a lot of them. And I'm starting to see it. It's really weird. I'm starting to, you go, you have your interactions in the city and you see, because like a lot of the shops, like the clothes shops, for instance, are mm -hmm. owned by um, Syrians. Right. Syrians. You don't really see my, um, people from Guadeloupe having their own shops. Mm -hmm. And then the Haitians are coming in now. A lot of Haitians coming in. And the Haitians are very like this. Mm -hmm. So when you have that unity, there's things you can do economically as a unit. And that's what yeah. they do. They open up their shop. They've got so many shops, more than the Guadeloupe. So there's a lot of kind of, underlying tension with the mm. Haitians. Haitians just come and take over. It's that whole, it's really weird. It's a very mm. weird dynamic, you know, but I love Haitians. I love Haitians. I love their, 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 their attitude, their mentality. They're also taking over Dominica as well because Dominicans don't want to work the land anymore, but the Haitians do. Wow. And what happens? They, they, they work the land, they take the land. So there's a lot of 
underlying tension with the Haitians as well, because the Haitians stick together. Yeah. They're very kind of by themselves. You see that in Dominica as well. They have a Haitian association, they have a Haitian this, a Haitian that, you know, they're very kind of like this. Dominicans are like that, mm-hmm. Haitians are like this. So when they're like this, what happens? You can't come in between. When Dominicans are like that, grudging each other because somebody's in foreign or whatever, mm-hmm. like that, they just want to come in and just do stupidness. But Haitians, you can't come in between, they're like that, you know? They've got all the, all the barbers in, um, in Roseau are owned by Haitians. No, no Dominicans. Mm. Haitians are over here. All the back streets, where all the shops are, all the food shops, Haitian. All the main shops in Pointe Pit, which is the capital, you've got this long row of avenue, which is closed shops, closed shops, closed shops, you know, a few um, electronic shops. It's all hate, it's all um, Syrian and a few Haitians. And then you've got the malls where some white people, really. Guadeloupe have kind of, I don't know, it's weird. Guadeloupe, even they, they, sometimes they just leave Guadeloupe and go to France, where mm-hmm. they get a lot of racism. You see, like, if you go into the countryside, because there's lots of countryside in Guadeloupe, you see a lot of abandoned houses, abandoned cars, because they've all rushed to go to France, because they think that's wow. the promised land. Finding out it's not the promised land, because there's a lot of racism. Yeah. Do France. people tend to leave to come back to Guadeloupe? Is that what tends to happen? Or they go and they end up... To... They just go and they forget Guadeloupe. Oh. A lot of, like, when I was... Because uh, I'd have these conversations with the young the people, um, you know, talk to them, very reluctant. They don't want to talk English. I said, yeah, but you have to, because this is what I'm here to do. To, we have to have these conversations. And she said, yeah, I can't wait till I'm, you know, I'm going to France. I said, I'm never coming back to Guadeloupe. And I said, but Guadeloupe is such a beautiful country. Why would mm. you want to leave? And... Yeah, but there's nothing here to do. I said, yeah, but create something for you to do. They just want to go to France because they think that's where France is, the be all and end all. It's a promised yeah. land. Only to find they get put into the ghetto and the, the, the racism and all the things, you know, they call the dirty Ant- Ant- Antillian. That's what they call them, dirty Antillians. That's what people told me who went to France to study and they came back because they found that it was just so much racism over there. Yeah. But sometimes they just take it. And I think that's a catch-22 because I think it's really easy as people who've been, who were born overseas, who grew up in the West, um, mm. to go to the Caribbean and see all the opportunity to see like yeah. mangoes on the floor. Like, do you know how much that would cost at Whole Foods? But if you're born yeah. there and you haven't seen yeah. that all that opportunity, it can be quite yeah. hard to imagine something that you've never seen. And I think now with the internet, it's beginning to change because in a way the world yeah. is smaller, but it's a real catch-22 to be able yeah. to bridge that gap but um yeah it's sad really really sad it is really sad it is sad because you know uh, seeing them they leave their country and then they, they leave themselves they 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 run away from themselves I see it sometimes as well you know and then, I mean Guadeloupe it's a beautiful country um and yeah I, I have to say France has made it like that but they're making it for themselves, really. Mm. They're not really making it for the benefit of Guadeloupians, it's my opinion, because I see more and more white people coming back, coming back and, and, and you like, if you see like the other day we had the TV on, all French stations, you know, and another thing, they just dominate the, the air, it's like all for French news, French news. But yeah, you do have the Caribbean aspect a little bit, but it's mostly dominated by the French news, the French this, French that, everything's French. Everything is French, which, okay, it's French Island, but there's not really anything about the Caribbean. They have, you know, a few slots about daily life and living in Guadeloupe, but mostly it's, it's dominated by the French culture and everything like that. You know, even the way they, they cook is French and it's like, but where's your caribbean is? Where's your identity? Because you're living in the Caribbean, you're from the Caribbean, but there is a large number of people now kind of overturning the idea of identity. And they're very much um, Guadeloupian because like every um, Saturday, what we do, um, we haven't done it for a couple of Saturdays because our car's in the garage, but we, we go down and listen to the drums. And this is beautiful. That's oh, one thing wow. that is in what, um, Dominica, they don't have that in Dominica. One thing about Dominica is like when it comes to culture, in my opinion, I just don't think it's as rich as it is in Guadeloupe, which is kind of a, a kind of paradox because in Guadeloupe now they have this thing called guaco which means big drums and I've, I've posted a few um, clips of it on my timeline and I'm 
I'm going to write about it again because I find it fascinating because um, it's about the drums and it's very African. So you have these people say they don't see themselves. It's like the same when they do carnival as well, because I've been to the carnival here a few times now and I was just blown away because I'm a carnival girl. I used to, we had my children, I used to always go to Trinidad, carnival, everywhere, carnival. I was I loved carnival, soca, all that kind of thing. And um, it was so, it's the, I find that the French carnival in Martinique and Guadeloupe is radically different from the Caribbean's carnival. Interesting, in it's what way? It's more Africanness. Wow. There's more African. They do this Africa. It's just, it just blew my mind. It blew my mind. And I've got a few clips I think I put on YouTube a while back. And it just blew my mind what I see in um, Guadeloupe, the carnival. It's very Africanness, but yet they don't want to see themselves as Africa. So that's mm-hmm. why I say it's a really kind of existence, how they see themselves, the culture. But there was a large, there was some people turning over the idea of identity and how they 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 say they're Guada, the Guadalupian, and they're very, they have their own, you know, um, little because you have this card called the Carte Seju, which is telling you about their it's a it's an ID. But mm-hmm. now they're trying they're producing these cards, these people, uh, it's this group they call Guaca, and they're saying it's Guada, it's Guada, I'm Guadalupian. That's how they identify themselves, not French. Mm-hmm. but as a Guadalupian of African descent. So it's slowly turned up. I haven't really been into the movement of SID, but when I go and see a glimpse of it, like they had the Emancipation Day thing, and it was like all very kind of all about Guadalupian culture, and which, which relates to the Africanness of it all when you see. So we used to go and see the drums. They had the drums every Saturday, and I used to, I used to tape, but we haven't been there for a few weeks now because I'm like, ah. Oh. And it's just the drums. And then you see the women dancing and the men dancing. It's mm-hmm. beautiful. I've never seen that in any Caribbean island, but only in Guadeloupe. So when it comes to culture, there's a paradox here. But when you see it, it's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Wow, that sounds amazing. Yeah. So that to me is eye-blowing. That's what I really love about Guadeloupe. Yeah. You know, when, I love the drums. I used to dance years ago. And um, when I hear the drums, I just go a bit crazy. <laughs> I kind of, I kind of um, bail myself in because my husband doesn't like being bar- embarrassed in public. <laughs> the drums are calling you. It's obviously your time. Yeah. <laughs> Leave him in the car next time. Yeah. <laughs> oh wow, that sounds that yeah. sounds so beautiful, and I think the preservation yeah. of culture is so important. It so is important. very important. Yeah, because it really shows who who you are as a person mm. you're in within you know and it, it's beautiful you see the little kids dancing up to old people dancing guaca and they all go in front of the drum they do these dances and it's beautiful and um I, I've taken some time out from Facebook for a little bit because there's too much going on but usually I every Saturday I would just like send some clips you know of my guaca go Facebook live so I'll do it a couple of weeks. I'll do it in a couple of weeks when I come back on again. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, well, it sounds like despite all of it, you found your you found your groove. Yeah, I found my groove. Yeah, I have found my groove. Yeah, because um, you know, there, I think there's pros and, and cons for both islands, mm-hmm. really. But I think if I was to really be honest with myself, I think my heart is in Dominica. Okay. Yeah, my heart because because of, you know because I love the people. Yeah, I'm a very people person. My husband, right. who I love extensively, I love my husband so much, even though he's a moody so and so sometimes <laughs> and whatever. But I love him because he's a beautiful spirit and a beautiful soul, and he's so different from a lot of guys that I've had relationships with in the past. And it sounds like I've had a lot, but I haven't. But he's just a different mentality, and it's just mm. a beautiful spirit. And I can just be my authentic self, I think, with Ensign, whereas I couldn't be with anywhere else. So I guess in all of it, he represents Dominica for me, and that's why I love Dominicans because of Dominica. He's Dominica, you know. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so beautiful. <laughs> I love story of a person and a place. Yes, yes. It's like but I would, I would into always the... tell people, you know, do your do your research, have your money. Mm-hmm. Do your research if you're thinking about relocating, have your money behind you. You know, you don't have to be rich and have lots of money, but make sure that you have check your about your health care, have your insurance, all of those kind of things.